As we have been doing a five-part series on self-care, I hope you have been able to see how caring for yourself in easy and consistent ways isn't selfish, my friend, and it actually is very, very necessary to help your body to be well and get well so that you can stay well. And I shared some simple modalities that pack a big punch, really, in helping your body to recover, to regain energy, and reduce your frustrating brain fog. So if you missed any of them, go back and catch them for easy tips to help your body feel cared for. And as a good way to maybe kind of put an exclamation point on the topic, I am sharing a recent episode I did over on the Bold Faith and Fashion podcast with my friend Ashley Anna Hurley. You will definitely want to check out her podcast, guys, as she gives amazing tips on dressing for your specific body type with her core style method and seeing your beauty through the eyes of your Heavenly Father. And you know I am all about what your specific body needs because, look, there isn't, there never will be a one-size-fits-all approach. God created you wonderfully And her podcast will help you to not only dress for your success each morning, but to help you see your identity in Christ. Ashley, Anna, and I, we spent some time chatting about the world's definition of self-care versus God's view of self-care and how you can prioritize yourself through caring for yourself in a way that still brings him honor. We get into some specifics of things that women are doing, especially in this midlife season and not doing to care for themselves well and how today, right now, you can make one simple change. Listen, if you just feel exhausted, just thinking about how you can or you should start prioritizing yourself and focusing on your health right now in this season after (laughs) maybe a lifetime of putting yourself on the back burner, caring for others first, doing all of these things for everybody else and giving yourself leftovers or nothing at all. I encourage you, if that is you, my friend, to schedule your Fatigue Freedom Call right now before you listen to this interview. So just push pause right now and go ahead and schedule it. The link is in the show notes. Because here's the thing. Your consistent low energy and foggy thinking really could be causing more overall health concerns that are not being addressed. I hear this over and over and over again, and I see it through my clients' labs. Did you know that most people are two-thirds of the way sick before a diagnosis is even made? That is ridiculous, and I call this kicking the lab test can down the road, and it is keeping people sick. Therefore, it is so important that you get to the bottom of your consistent low energy and foggy thinking and stop brushing it off as, I'm in menopause. I've got these perimenopausal symptoms or this is what it's going to be like until I get through menopause. You do not have to live with low energy and foggy thinking. You don't. You don't need to live with daily fatigue and low energy coupled with a foggy brain that is frankly at this time in your life starting to worry you, right? I know it is because I went through the same thing. So what this really means for you is that you can know your why, (laughs) know why you are struggling with daily low energy and daily foggy thinking, and you can fix it before a diagnosis is made and you are two-thirds of the way sick. I myself, guys, was just a few points away from having a serious autoimmune disease that if I hadn't put myself first for a season, I would be on medication for the rest of my life. Right now, I would be taking that medication and I would have to take it until the Lord calls me home. So doesn't it make more sense to you to discover your why before you get a diagnosis that changes your life in such a drastic way? Doesn't it make more sense to fix it now and prevent a more serious disease? If so, click that link in the description now to get on my schedule for a fatigue freedom call You can expect us to dive into your specific fatigue and brain fog concerns so that you really can understand your why behind your low energy and foggy thinking. And you will leave with a renewed optimism and confirmation that, yeah, you can turn your symptoms around. You can live your life in this season and beyond with clear thinking and sustained energy throughout the whole day. I guarantee this will not be time wasted.
back with episode number 99. I'm super excited. I'm almost to episode number 100. And the last two episodes to 100 are going to be amazing because I am joined by two of my business besties. One of them today is Michelle, and she is over at Treasured Wellness. So I am really excited to share her expertise with you today as it concerns um, nourishing our bodies and biblical self-care, how those things are tied together. Michelle is a board-certified holistic and functional health coach. She is a certified facial analysis practitioner. And as I mentioned before, she is a host of the Treasured Wellness Christian Podcast. She energizes female professional leaders in midlife who are fighting low energy, belly fat, and brain fog to reclaim their whole health with anti-inflammatory lifestyle changes and natural solutions using a godly approach. Praise God, right? That's awesome. Michelle has a deep passion for helping women get to the root cause of dis-ease, not disease, but dis-ease before it turns into disease without the frustration and overwhelm. Michelle is happily married to her best friend of 32 years. They have two adult children and their spouses and three grand dogs. Michelle and her husband are currently thriving and during this phase of living with an empty nest. So welcome, Michelle. I'm so glad to have you. Oh, my honor. It's my honor to be here, Ashley Anna. I'm so excited. This is our second second round together. I love it. Oh, yeah. And there will be many more. That's what happens when yes. you have business besties. You don't have to do this yes. thing, alone, right? Right. <laughs> okay. So start off by telling us just kind of briefly, you mentioned in your introduction that um, anti-inflammatory lifestyle changes and natural solutions is the approach that you use with a biblical mindset, a a God-glorifying system. Can you tell us why it is that you focus on anti-inflammatory solutions and natural solutions and even biblical mindset? Why do you do that? It's so different from what a lot of other health coaches, like the approach that they come from. Yeah, that's a great question. And I've always been more of the natural, like God created everything on this earth for us to use. It's up to us to know how to use it and, you know, be careful of the things that might be, you know, poisonous for us, you know, like herbs and all of that. And I've always had such a desire to kind of go down that uh, trail and learn more about like herbology and things like that, because he did create everything on the earth for us to use. But the thing about anti-inflammatory is, the things that he created on the earth for us to use are good for our bodies, right? I mean, we plants, right? For example, plants, you know, and he has given us dominion over the earth for us to use it. And so we need to be wise in that. And when we are eating an anti-inflammatory food plan, our nutrition plan, it is really helping to reduce the inflammation in our body. And it's not just our body, it's our brain too. It's all connected, everything from the top of our head to the soles of our feet, it's all connected. It all has a purpose. And when we are eating foods that are promoting inflammation, it is promoting dis-ease, which turns into disease. And so it's just so interesting that there are so many different diets out there that people tout that work for them. And that's great. But I like to bring people back to the basics and bring people back to the Lord and get them back into talking to the Lord, getting into his word. Lord, what do you want me to do? Because I don't do a one size fits all approach because there can't be, there really can't be. Now, some things are one size fits all. Sure. Everybody should be drinking water. But, you know, and that's just getting back to the basics. You know, everybody needs good sleep, good quality water, good nutrition. But one person can eat broccoli and another person can't. And it's important for that person to understand because otherwise they're like, I'm following this plan. It's not working. It's not working because it's not working for you. And so when we strip away the noise and we just get back to what God says because he designed us, then we are able to really, truly live a lifestyle of good health. Right. So tell me a little bit about how inflammation, because you mentioned that inflammation affects everything. It affects your mind. It affects your body. It affects how you feel. 
and probably the amount of energy that you have, right? Because when you're inflamed, then your body is actually focusing on trying to fix whatever is inflamed rather than maybe focusing on giving you that extra boost you need to, you know, finish the work that you need to finish or chase after your kids or whatever it is. Um, So how does that really affect us psychologically and the kind of decisions that we make specifically when it comes to nourishing our bodies? How does that, how does that make it maybe more difficult? Well, inflammation is not necessarily a bad thing, right? If we cut ourselves, we need inflammation. We need the body to do what it was designed to do, which is bring inflammation to that source, that site to help um, facilitate healing. But inflammation can also be a red flag that something is not right. So if something's not right in your brain or your body, right? Because it affects both the brain and the body. And for example, I work with a lot of women that are struggling with fatigue and whether it's been unaddressed, um, undiagnosed officially, whatever, they are struggling with fatigue and a very, very close second counter like twins is brain fog. And mm-hmm. so what that is, is it's a, a inflammation in the brain and the body that is dragging you down. So you're having things like chronic fatigue syndrome, adrenal fatigue, and different things. So much fatigue or so much uh, inflammation causing the fatigue really get, kind of gets into our head. And we start feeling like we are not being um maybe not the person that we want to be. We're not doing the things that we want to do. We're not living the life that we want to live. And so it kind of like gets into our head, but inflammation, we have to be careful that it doesn't become a buzzword. Okay. Because inflammation is, it is out there. It is important that we are reducing our inflammation, but it's important that again, you're reducing it the way your body needs you to reduce it. So I think going back to the first question is getting back into what does God say specifically to me? How can I nourish my body by reducing my inflammation God's way? Like, how do you want me to do this Lord? Because I don't want to eat salad every day for the rest of my life. For example, um, Food is important. Food is medicine or food is poison. Absolutely. And we have to understand that on an intellectual level, but also a heart level. We have to understand. And and really, Ashleyana, by the time we hit, you know, 35 and up, I think it's fair to say we've had our fun. And now it's time to get serious because we can't eat and live the way we used to in our 20s. It doesn't work anymore. Our body reacts negatively now and so we can't rebound we don't we don't just you know work it off for two hours and we rebound that's not how it works anymore we have hormonal changes and on and on and the inflammation is constantly affecting every part of our body right like so you could be having chronic headaches or sinus inflammation sinus problems joint pain um even pms and like hot flashes and stuff signs of inflammation in the body and so just acknowledging that, that it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's a warning signal to our body can help us mentally be like, okay, I'm tired of living this way. I'm going to make some changes for me that are actually going to work because it's for me. So I want to just talk a little bit about your podcast and some of the things that I have listened to, heard you say that are contributors to inflammation. And so one of them is because you've mentioned this actually just as you were talking, that you aren't aware as an individual what foods are actually causing inflammation. Everybody has different reactions to different foods um, or even chemicals in our food. You talk about that as well. So what you're eating would be that category. The other thing that causes inflammation that you have talked about on your podcast is actually stress and trauma responses, um, brain, basically brain wiring, um, It's a fight or flight responses that you haven't um, dealt with or worked on. That would be the other one. And then um, another thing is maybe just not simply taking the time to have to have some of those basics, basic habits in um, your routine, whether that's drinking water, fun movement, as you call it. Are those kind of the top three, would you say, contributors to that inflammation? 
Yeah. I mean, stress is huge. Stress is a huge contributor to inflammation. Um, and I like to kind of put that trauma in there with a stress bucket because, you know, the majority of us Christian women are dealing with unaddressed or unresolved trauma, whether mm -hmm. that is from our childhood or just from two years ago. Like when we are, I call it the uh, being the good Christian girl and we're just stuffing down our emotions and our feelings because that's what we may have been taught. That's what we may think we should do. Um, the body keeps the score. And there's actually a book by that title, The Body Keeps the Score, but it really does keep the score. It will never forget. Your brain will never forget. And so you're being triggered at various different times, and that is causing a stress response in the body. Your nervous system is on overdrive. Okay, that's causing inflammation, but you know what else it's doing? It's shutting down your digestion. Yeah. So this is what... <laughs> So this is why you're like, why am I so bloated? Why can't I go to the bathroom? Why can't your body is inflamed with stress and your digestive system slows down way down because it's trying to help you through that fight or flight or freeze. It's helping the nervous system. It's like all forces on the nervous system. We're not going to worry about the digestion so much anymore. And people don't think about that because we are on autopilot we are just in this go 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 mentality you know where we don't even stop to breathe right. how many women don't do deep breathing on a regular basis we yeah we just forget to breathe we forget yeah. to breathe yeah. We're like well i'm breathing like my body just does it i don't have to think about it no you're shallow breathing yep. <laughs> You know, and you need to like picture that beautiful newborn baby. And when they're breathing, when they're asleep, their belly's going up and going down. It's going up. So we want to be belly breathing. And I tell my clients like the best way to start practicing this, because, you know, having a life, creating a lifestyle of health, good health takes practice. Like yeah. you're not going to just do it overnight. Like, right. It takes intentionality, discipline, practice. So I say when you're going to the bathroom. Hopefully that's one of the times in your day you're alone where you can just be in the bathroom with the door closed. Perfect time to practice deep breathing. And so that is going to calm your nervous system down. It's going to help regulate everything in your body. It's going to help your hormones and it's going to give your brain much needed oxygen and you're going to be able to cope continue on, deal with whatever you're doing that day. This is not a one and done though. Like this is a practice. You want to be able to create that healthy habit, like habit stacking. Oh, I'm going to the bathroom. I'm going to start breathing. Yep. Yes. <laughs> and, it, and it's just, that's the way it's going to kick in as a healthy part of your life. That's just what you do. And you will notice very quickly, oh my gosh, I haven't really breathed today. Yeah. You know? You'll feel so. I mean, I have been practicing when I'm feeling that stress come on to just do the breathing that you taught me, which was five, five, five. Isn't that what yeah. you did? Yeah. Um, and so I have done that and it does really help my body and you can feel the difference right away. So you mentioned a really important thing just a few seconds ago when you said how many women don't stop to dot, dot, dot. And that is why I have you on here because Two reasons. Number one, for my biblical beauty series, which we're talking a lot about what is beauty through the biblical lens. And also I've kind of combined that with self-care because self-care from a world's point of view is something that's very surface. It's something that can be very um, woo-woo and new agey. When you look at self-care through a biblical lens, we do it we take care of ourselves for the purpose of glorifying God, right? So right. you're talking about things that women, a lot of us, especially as we've just had these habits in our, you know, teens and 20s. And then again, you do, you hit about 35, which is where I'm at. This is 100% true. You hit that midlife and all of us on your body isn't bouncing back and you have barely any good habits of taking care of yourself 
because you have really just been, you know, taking care of your family or doing your work because you're very passionate about doing a good job. A lot of women that are listening to our podcast are very mo- highly motivated women who want to do a good job at whatever they're doing and excel at whatever they're doing. However, the health gets put on the back burner. And this really affects a lot of things as you were talking about. You talked about inflammation and fatigue and belly bloat, but it also, like all those things then, now you go to your closet, right? Right. And you're putting on your clothes. And even if the clothes are cute, you don't feel good. You don't feel like anything looks good on you. And maybe you don't feel good because you actually do look tired or you do look sick. Maybe your face is inflamed and your belly is inflamed and you have bags under your eyes and it's an, okay, now... I have to have an outfit that is looser because my belly is bloated and I have to wear makeup because, you know, I have the bags under my eyes because I'm actually not, I've, you know, not been sleeping or whatever it is. And so my next kind of question is, and this is kind of a tricky one, but I know you can handle it, Michelle, Lord's got you. (laughs) Our physical health and really prioritizing self-care again, through a biblical lens for the purpose of glorifying God by showing up each day and being a testament to who he is, right? How is that, the physical health, taking care of ourselves, tied to our headspace? And are they interdependent? It's kind of that chicken or the egg question is kind of what I'm I'm asking. How do you deal with that with your clients? Wow, that is a great question. And it very much is chicken or egg. And Um, So I'll just go back to the Lord, like, did he create the egg first or did he create the chicken to make the egg, right? So it's just so interesting. Like, I I believe there were chickens on the ark. (laughs) So to me, it's always been God created the chicken. Um, But the thing about that is I, I want to go into the word and I want to talk about where Jesus says what the two greatest commandments are. Because I think that comes down, it it just, it just takes everything and just brings it right into there. We are supposed to love the Lord with all our heart, right? And what's the second command? To love our neighbor as ourselves. Okay, well, wait a second. We can't officially, you know, truly love our neighbor if we don't truly love ourselves. So he is under the assumption, right? We're all under the assumption that we love ourselves because we're, he didn't have to say, oh, and by the way, love yourself. He didn't have to say that because we're, we're God's children. So we automatically, you know, God is love. We are created in the image of God. And so automatically we should love ourselves. That doesn't mean that it's easy, right? That's a whole other conversation we can have, but just bringing it down to those two things. Okay. So your, you know, it's very dependent on, I believe, what you believe about yourself. It brings us back to the identity question. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that you are a treasured daughter of the king? Do you believe in who you are and whose you are? If you can answer those two questions, then I think the rest falls into place because then you're continuously leaning into the Lord. What does he have to say? You're, You're seeking him first, Matthew 6, 33. So I really believe it's an identity. Um, When you feel secure in your identity, I believe you are better able to treasure your temple because you recognize my, my body is a temple. This isn't, this isn't my body. It's a temple of the Holy spirit. It's the Lord's body. It's like a shell. I have the great race, great responsibility of taking care of my temple And see, with age comes wisdom, right? We're not thinking this way in our 20s and 30s, really. Most of us are not, you know, mid, you know, low 30s. We're not thinking about our bodies as a temple. We just want what we want and we treat our bodies like machines. But it's this biblical mind shift when we realize and recognize our identity, our true identity, it is so much easier to embrace the reality that our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And because food is medicine or poison, it's our responsibility to fill it and fuel it properly so that it can do, we can do the things that God has laid on our heart to do. Amen. 
Okay. So um, I do have to say there's a lot of, it seems really complicated and difficult for women. Um, I know even for myself to actually get to a place where we can basically have these metrics of measurement of like, are we healthy? Aren't we healthy? Because society has this unrealistic expectation of what women should look like. We come in so many shapes and sizes and even bone densities. And the amount of fat that we each carry is so different. And so like being healthy, like a healthy weight for one person is so different than a healthy weight for another person. And right. that's not just height related, by the way, like it's so many factors. And so I think where it's so complicated for women and honestly, the a big reason, another reason why I have Michelle on my podcast for you guys is because having someone to help coach you through what is actually healthy for you, like those goals that are specifically customized to your body and like your chemical makeup and all of that kind of stuff is so important because if you're just going in there and you're like, okay, I'm confident in Christ. I know who I am. I, I know that like what I do is important and I know staying healthy is important. But then if you get too distracted by the number on a scale or by the way that your body physically looks and, and that can be anything that there's so many things I can go in that category, then all of a sudden it's actually, it feels defeating to yeah. make healthy choices. And then you maybe just go ahead and just get back into your same old habits and rhythm that aren't serving you because you don't feel like you can measure up to some kind of standard that you put in your head that really isn't God's standard for you. Mm, beautifully said. Right? Beautifully said. That's not God's standard for you as his daughter. It's not. He, We have taken on lies from the enemy that God never wanted us to take on. You know, he, he, that's, that's part of why I believe Jesus says, Hey, give it to me. You know, my burden is easy. You're carrying a burden you were never meant to carry. Like you're believing the lie way back in Genesis when Le when Eve believed the lie, you yeah. know, we are still believing lies because why the enemy wants to steal, kill and destroy, you know, and, and he's doing that. He's doing a great job on it. Um, but we have the victory, you know, we have the victory in Christ, you know, because once we have this biblical mindset, that's why this biblical mindset portion in um, both what you and I do in our programs and in our coaching is so key because, you know, I, I tell people, I can tell you what to eat. I can, you know, go deep into lifestyle changes, but if we don't have the mindset shifts to a biblical, biblical standard, a biblical worldview. We're not looking at the worldview. We don't want the worldly view. We want a biblical model. We want a biblical worldview. That is where true health is in body, soul, and spirit. It's not in the world's way. So there's so much noise around us. And so like, to your point, if we get distracted by looking on Instagram and TikTok and, and following all the gurus and the, the, doing the, the, the challenges that are not necessarily what our body needs. Yep. It's going to confuse us. It's going to keep us overwhelmed. Yep. And that's, that's why I always tell people like, look, you need to pray about this. You need to pray about if, is this right for you? Right. Yep. And, and that's important because, you know, when they, when these women, when us as women truly believe that we are hearing properly from, you know, from the Lord accurately, like, that's a whole other, we get confused. But when we understand this is what God wants, let me give you a, for instance, I've had four people in the last few months say, God led me to you. It was nothing but God leading me to you. Um, and then they explain the situation and it just, it blows me away every time, every single time, you know, cause like, I'm small potatoes. <laughs> so like you, you just Google and like looking for something, whatever they type in there and I pop up, God led them to me. And there's a reason it's because they were ready and they were listening and they were seeking the Lord. And so they were like, I'm done with the noise. I'm done with the crazy of the world. And I just want to get serious. Lord, show me how, but you're right. 
you know, BMI is not the gold standard, for example, and doctors are still using this. Doctors are still using this. Um, I wanted to, I'm going to look over here at my notes for a second because I wanted to um, say that um, BMI was actually created in the early 1900s. Um, it was actually developed in the 19th century. Like, it's crazy how long this has been going on for. It's so limiting. It is really, really limiting. BMI is like a measure of your weight compared to your height, right? So it's like supposed to be ideal weight. But like you said, it doesn't take into consideration body composition, it, bone structure. My sister and I have talked about this before because she is, she's a different bone structure than me, you know, which, which means because she's, bigger boned, I guess, for lack of a better way to explain it. She has way more upper body strength than me, you and know, and way more naturally because of the bone. Exactly. Yeah. And exactly. she needs probably more muscle and maybe even a little more fat to protect those bones too. I mean, anyways, we all need that, okay. but yeah, totally. Yeah. So true. So it's just not the gold standard and it shouldn't be. And it's also for men and women, it's not taking into consideration men and women. <laughs> And so it's really like I am seeing that more evidence is starting to come out that it's it's, you know, body fat's not the only reason why someone's heavier. And I don't understand why if this was created in the 19th century, we're just now, <laughs> you know, getting evidence and, and research about why it's not the gold standard, but it's limiting and it should not be still used. It's still widely used in doctor's offices as disease risk. Uh, as a tool. And so I just encourage you to take it with a little bit of a grain of salt, right? Because yes, it can be good. It can give you an indicator of higher metabolic uh, disease. And we don't, we don't want that. Of course, it's a tool in your toolbox. That's what I think I would say. It's a tool in your toolbox, but ultimately at the end of the day, it is not the gold standard. So let's talk about then, you know, just First of all, just validating, we just want to value, validate you, the listeners, that your weight doesn't necessarily determine your health. Of course, if you know, like, okay, yep, I am overweight, or even if you are obese or things like that, you know that. Then, of course, yes, you have to take care of that so that your body isn't um, fighting all of those different things that come with it, Okay. So, but that's not what we're talking about because a lot of us know that and are working on that. And if you need help with that, Michelle is a very lovely, kind, sweet, gentle person to deal with all of those things. And she will help you because sometimes actually weight gain can go back to what you talked about. The foods that you're eating can be really healthy, but they're actually causing you to be inflamed, which is then causing you to gain weight. Yeah. It's that crazy. You can eat healthy, quote unquote, healthy things, but if they are not good for your body, you will gain weight. It is so frustrating. And that's why Michelle is there to help you. Okay. But let's get to the practical side of things. So we've already established why it's important and why it's biblical to take care of your body because it is a temple for the Holy Spirit. Plain and simple. That was a thank you for those words, Michelle. Amen to that. So I want you to give us three um, tips of how to take care of yourself. But the first three that I want you to give, technically, I want you to give us six. So sorry. But <laughs> the first three I want you to be are things that people know they should be doing, but they're not. And the reason I want you to give those is because I just want them to hear it again and just validate that. But then the other three I want you to give us are three things that people aren't doing that they don't necessarily know they should do. Oh, wow. Hot seat questions. I love it. Okay. So three things that people are not doing. Um, water. They're not drinking enough water, plain and simple. They're dehydrated on a cellular level, which is why I love to look at urine tests and say, oh yeah, your cells are dehydrated because people are like, oh, but I drink all this water. But when you really measure it and add it up and I'm not one that weighs and measures and counts calories, that's not what we do. But with water, you really do need to see how much you're getting because you feel like you're drinking more than you are. Um, also electrolyte stuff. Yeah. Okay, so helpful. This little green drink here is something that Michelle recommended to me and it really has helped. 
Yeah, it does. That's that's a whole other thing because again, we are deficient in a lot of minerals. And so having to replenish those minerals is is something that we need to, you know, take the bull by the horns and do, especially if you're sweating, working out, just whatever, you don't even have to be doing that. It was kind of touted as for the workout person. No, everybody needs electrolytes. And there are, there are good products and not so good products. And Michelle, you help with all of that and you have podcasts and that's in your um, coaching and all of that. Right. Because you don't want to waste your time, your money and your energy on something that is full of fillers and doesn't work and all of that. So So what's the second um, thing? One was water that people know they should be drinking more water, but they're not. Right. What's the second thing? Sleep. They know they should be getting sleep and they're not. They're staying up late. They're working on their laptops. They're checking emails at 10 p.m. They're binging TV. They're staying up and watching news. Don't ever watch news and then go to sleep. You won't sleep. (laughs) You know, like choosing what you're doing in that hour before you go to sleep is really important. And that's why I talk about, you know, AM and PM fuel up times and and really just creating a calming bedtime routine for yourself is your PM fuel up time. But we're not taking sleep seriously. And let me tell you, over 40, sleep is life. (laughs) <laughs> sleep well, and, and sleep affects your hormones. Yes. That also affects weight gain, fatigue, the fatigue, fog, brain fog. Girls, why do I know this? Because Michelle taught me. Okay. What's the third thing that people know they should be doing, but they're not doing it to help nourish their body? I would say moving their body. I would say moving their body because there's a lot of times, you know, we, we go all in really hard in our 20s and 30s, and then we just we get tired. <laughs> we get tired. We have been taking care of everybody for decades, and we just get to a point where it's like we're starting to not feel good. We're getting the belly bloat. We're having some hormonal changes. We don't know why. We don't know what's going on. We don't understand it. We know we should work out, but at the end of the day, we're exhausted, and so moving our body can be as simple as a 20 minute walk. Moving your body can be as simple as kicking the ball with your grandkid or your kid, Ch- doing an obstacle course with your dog in the backyard. I mean, it can be you know, fun. That is, fun. That, is, that is what Michelle talks about. She talks about fun, healthy movement. And that is again, how you customize it for your clients. You're like, how do we make this fun? So you want to do it. Okay, so now let's go to the three things that people maybe don't necessarily know that they need to be doing to keep themselves nourished um, or even avoiding, you could go that route too. What would those things be? Good. Um, Okay. I would say the first one is they are not eating enough protein. And I'm talking specifically to women. They are not eating enough protein. Our for bone growth, muscle growth, um, hormonal health, keeping them even, we need protein and we are critically deficient in the amount of protein we are eating as women. And let me give you an example. An egg has five grams of protein. That's it. If you eat one egg for breakfast, I'm so proud of you, number one, for eating breakfast. (laughs) But number two, if that's all you eat, you're only getting five grams of protein. Your brain needs protein. And so, again, brain, body, it's all connected. So they're not eating enough protein. So I always say protein at every meal. Make sure you're eating three meals a day, protein at every meal. Um, The next thing I would say um, is... I, goodness, I could really lump vegetables in that as well, because we're just not eating enough vegetables. We're, we're more carb heavy, even still, like okay, even you when we're explain something to me, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but this was yeah. so you explained something to me when we had a conversation the other day, vegetables are carbohydrates, right. a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them. But why are you saying vegetables as your carbohydrates are important? Well, because there's a lot of fiber in there and there's a lot of nutrients that you're not getting from. Yeah. Telling me it's not a simple carbohydrate. It's a complex, right? Yes. There's complex carbs and simple carbs. And when you're eating the carbohydrate that is in a box or a package and sits on a shelf for two years before it expires, 
or even if it's not packaged food and it's like whole food, but it's rice, pasta, breads, those are more simple carbohydrates. They break down in your body into sugar very quickly. And so you're not getting all of the nutrients, plus a lot of the processed carbohydrate. I mean, they're just processed. And so they've been stripped of their nutrients. And this is why you see where vitamin D has been added calcium has been added into like cereals and things, right? Because they stripped the it, of its nutrients. Whereas, you know, so that's what I call the um, simple carbohydrates because it hits your bloodstream quickly, turns into sugar. The complex carbohydrates like quinoa, um, beans, you know, um, like wild grain rice, you know, it's not that rice is bad per se, you know, I might have to have a season where you avoid rice for a while, but rice itself is not bad. Some rice is not healthy. We got to find out which ones are right. Um, those are going to give you more bang for your buck, right, nutritionally. And that's what we want to do. We want a well-rounded plate, so to speak. Okay, so what's the third thing? We have not eating enough protein, not getting enough vegetables, which what's important about that is you want complex carbohydrates that actually nourish your body and take a little bit longer to digest, right? What's the yep. third thing that people may is, not really know? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, this is not related to food at all. Um, it is, we are addicted to devices. Nice. Yeah, we are so addicted to devices. What is that doing, is that doing to our bodies? It's draining us. It's literally draining us. It's draining us from head to toe. If you are listening and you are literally feeling at two, three o'clock where you are walking through quicksand or you are just like sludging through your day, you you are being drained. And it, it could be a number of things. It could be everything that we're talking about. It could be that you have a, a fatigue condition that needs to be addressed. But your cell phone being an appendage is draining you. And I'm not going to get into like the EMFs and all of that stuff, but you, you know, have an episode, a podcast episode on that yet. Yeah, I do. I'm just not really sure which one I can look, um, but I, I do talk it, about it. I link it. You know what I mean? Yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah. Let me, let me think about that. Um, as far as like, I, <laughs> I wasn't sure if I was going to say the addiction to the devices or we're not doing self-care, but I really could to jump into either. But the fact that women are sleeping with their phones by their bed, big no, no, big no, no. Okay. Because that is keeping your brain alert. It's mm -hmm. too tempting to reach over and just scroll. You wake up at 2am to go to the bathroom. You can't go back to sleep. Oh, let me see what's going on Facebook. You know, let me, let me read my book on, um, you know, my device instead. Right. It's not, it doesn't matter that they've changed the lighting settings so that it's not so much blue light. It's still keeping your brain alert. It's still hurting the your apps, The social media apps, the dopamine yeah. addiction. Oh yeah. That, it's big hit. There's so many things that tie into there and, and, and you probably go into a lot of that in your podcast, right? Yeah. Yeah, we do because it's just, and, and we go more deeper, of course, in, in the group because in the yes. midlife health makeover, because that's where we're actually getting, we are really trying to make changes yep. for life, for a lifestyle of good health. Because listen, as the mom, as the woman in your home, whether you have kids at home or not, you mm -hmm. are the heartbeat of your home. Yeah. Everything you do trickles down beautifully into the family unit. Everything that you learn, the changes that you make, and you might get some pushback. Trust me, I, I you know, I know that. <laughs> I got a lot of pushback, um, especially from my college age son when he first came home his freshman year of college and he was expecting all the junk that was in there before and it was gone and he's like what can I eat there's nothing to eat and I'm like it's called cooking what right. would you like <laughs> <laughs> I love but that since then, since then there's so many other healthier options that are shelf stable but the the longevity of the product is not as long as some of the un more unhealthy foods so it's not like you can never have a chip again <laughs> it's just yeah. making the right healthier choices. But yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess that would be the top three. Awesome. This um, was crazy informative. Um, Michelle, I just, I love having these conversations with you. You are definitely my go-to girl, especially as I'm in my mid thirties and I'm heading into that midlife and my body is changing and my hormones are changing. 
I'm finding out the foods that my body doesn't really like. Um, and a lot of that is just having those discussions with you and just saying, hey, this is what my body has done after I've drank this thing, ate this thing. And you really actually have specific tests as well that you do. You are very precise with how you go through and um, navigate what you're actually allergic to or being inflamed by. So thank you for that, for all the help you've given me and my listeners today. And I'm just going to close us in prayer unless there's anything you want to add before I close. No, I think it's great. And just ladies, love yourselves, take care of yourself, show, show yourself care and love. I just did an episode this week on it, episode 263 about, you know, is it selfish, right? And I know you did an episode too, which is funny. so we did funny. Not plan that. We did not plan it at all. So <laughs> it was so good. But you know, it's, it's really our responsibility to care for ourselves. And so you are not being selfish. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I'll pray over us and then we'll close. All right. Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for the gifts that you have given to Michelle. I thank you for each woman listening. I thank you that you have given us the tools and the resources and the food to help nourish our bodies. Lord, I thank you that in your word, you talk about how our body is the temple, how we really do need to take care of our bodies, but not because we want to look good, not because we want to attract attention to ourselves, but because we want to glorify and attract attention to who you are, to whose we are, which is yours. So Heavenly Father, I just pray that this episode would help women to be empowered to take care of themselves, not because they hate the way they look, not because they even hate the way they feel, but because they love who you are and because they want to show up for their kingdom calling in a way that they can go full speed, full throttle for you. And so, Lord, we just pray over the women right now who are struggling, whether it's with weight, whether it's with something in their minds, whether it's, you know, depression or anxiety or whatever that they're struggling with. And we just pray that you would break those chains in Jesus' name right now on that they would begin to feel empowered to make those healthy choices to nourish their temple of the Holy Spirit. It's in your name I pray, Jesus. Amen. I hope you enjoyed today's episode, my friend. I hope it challenged you. I hope it encouraged you and stretched you in some way. And if it did, would you stop right now and share this episode with a coworker, a biz bestie, a friend or sister who has also been praying for a breakthrough in her whole health? Also, it would bless me so much if you would pop on over to Apple Podcasts and just leave me a quick review to let me know how much you are enjoying the content. And this really does help other women just like you to find the show. Treasured Wellness can also be found on Christian Mix 106 and over on YouTube. One more thing, come on over to our Facebook community, Holistic Health for Christian Women Over 40. I would love to see you there. Until next time, remember you are a beautiful treasure and good health in body, soul, and spirit is your birthright.